I've been a local church pastor for most of the past three decades. Some of these places I look back on more fondly than others like any of our past experiences. But this past Sunday, I, I got curious and decided to watch one of my former church's worship services online to see what they were saying about the week that we've been through. And I was afraid I'd see what I saw. Not one word. A one-hour worship service and not one word, not one word from the pulpit about the violence and terrorism and lawlessness and murder or the Jesus flags waving all around it. Not one word about the supremacy. Not one word about a vile movement embraced by so many professed Christians. There was a prayer offered at one point in the service about sort of a difficult week, but nothing to delineate this week from any other week. Nothing to indicate the gravity of the moment. No specificity. And honestly, it broke my heart. First, because I knew that church and that staff and those people, some really good and decent people who've simply lost the plot. But the real heartbreak was in knowing a similar thing was playing out across churches all over this country. That people and places supposedly dedicated to moral leadership and to caring for humanity and for being agents of compassion had simply missed the moment and abandoned their namesake and failed their calling. Friends, you may attend one of the churches across the country that's having trouble speaking out right now and being clear. And whether you've spent a month or a lifetime at your current spiritual home, I'm suggesting this might be a good time to leave it. Now you may need to follow God or your convictions right out of the building in order to hold on to your soul. Our country is experiencing a real-time constitutional crisis and human rights emergency generated by our elected officials. We have sustained an unprecedented and brazen act of terrorism committed almost exclusively by white people, many claiming faith in Jesus and quoting the Bible. If there was ever a time when the church should be visible and vocal, it should be now. If there was ever a moment moral leadership was made for, it is this one. If there was ever a day where spiritual leaders should stand bravely in front of their faithful and speak the hardest of truths, complaint and mass exodus be damned, it should be this one. But it probably won't happen. Many of these would-be prophets are silent right now out of cowardice or self-preservation or worse yet, agreement with the sins of this administration. Many of them know that to speak clearly right now is to invite turbulence and conflict and risk people leaving. And so rather than take a stand, they will dance around the conversation and preach around the issues. They will sedate their congregations with flowery, intentionally vague prayers that pretend to speak but actually say nothing. They will attempt to distract their flocks for an hour or so and sidestep the urgency outside their buildings because they don't have the intestinal fortitude to brave the difficult conversations that taking bold stands creates. Many of the professed spiritual leaders in these faith communities will count on people filling their pews and chairs not really caring enough to ask them to speak with absolute clarity about the present crisis against humanity in America. And you can't let them be right. Every pastor, priest, and minister, especially white ministers, should be standing before their various communities this weekend and specifically naming this administration's violence. They should be explicitly condemning these violations against people and calling their communities to do the same. They should be directly confronting the privilege that they have benefited from and participated in as part of the white church in America. They should be specifically naming the current president's stoking of violence as fully antithetical to the heart of their faith tradition. If not, if they refuse to do this, you may want to ask yourself, what the point is and why you would need to stay there another day. You may want to ask yourself what use the religion they espouse there actually is 
if not to rescue the most vulnerable from the most powerful, if not to advocate for the least of these, if not to care for their neighbor as themselves. If your faith leaders can't find their prophetic voices to defend people from homegrown terrorists, are they really worth looking to for guidance on how to live one's faith or know God's will or emulate Jesus? If they have silent tongues and feet of clay in these days, why would you remain and nurture such moral impotence? If you're a member of a church led by a white minister or leadership, and the leaders there don't specifically reference the terrorism at the Capitol and elsewhere around the country, and they don't push back hard against it, you should ask them why they aren't. Ask them directly. And if you aren't satisfied with their answer, seriously consider leaving then and there. This may be your greatest spiritual declaration, the most concrete affirmation of your beliefs that you'll ever make. If you're keeping company with polite cowards and smiling frauds whose faith is quiet right now, you may need to empty the pews and exit the buildings and go outside and loudly speak the words of truth and compassion and justice that need to be spoken right now. You may need to fill their silent void with your rafter-shaking voice. You may need to follow your deepest faith convictions right out the door and toward the people who so need you to be present. People ask me all the time, John, how do I know when to stay in a, in a faith community where I'm feeling tension or conflict and when do I leave? How, how long do I work there to change things? And how do I know when it's time to go? And I can't answer that for you. I can only tell you that right now is a really good time because you're finding out a lot about the place where you spend your time and the people around you and the leadership there. A year or so ago, a woman came up to me at an event and she said, John, I left my church and I feel so much guilt and so much grief. And I wonder if I hadn't made a mistake, maybe I should have stayed there. Maybe I should have changed that church. And I said, well, you have changed it by leaving. Your departure might be the catalyst for people there to have conversations they wouldn't have had otherwise. Maybe the leadership there after you've left is going to wake up and find their voices. And you're going to go to a new community or create a community or just live in the world with a more authentic voice. And that's going to be a beautiful thing. So... If you're out there and you're wondering, should I stay in this place or should I leave? There's no easy answer, but you have a lot to help you decide right now. If the people of faith where you gather this week will not bring mercy and love and goodness while such things are in such great demand, that may be your cue to exit. You may need to leave the church to find your religion.